and his name is wonderful, and that you can receive it for the opening prayer and announcements. She didn't point. She pointed herself. Over. She's the whole back class. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, me and my wife had an anniversary. Ain't that something? <laughs> Seems like long ago already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, everybody have a wonderful Christmas. Everybody get everything they want. Yeah. Good for y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to see everybody here. I'm glad. Kind of glad. That, I'm glad. I'm glad of Christmas because of what Christmas it stands for. But I'm kind of glad it's past. Mm -hmm. Everybody can slow down on it and worry about this thing. Okay. We're going to open, open in prayer this morning. Has anybody got anything they'd like to bring before the church before we do? All right. Father God, we thank you for this uh, beautiful morning, Lord. We thank you for those who are here. We just pray that we'd all get a blessing out of being in your house, Lord. It's, it's a wonderful day to see those here that are here this morning, Lord. And uh, Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank you for them. We just pray that you'd be with this hour, Lord, for somebody here is lost, and so it might be said or done, but they'd accept you before it's everlasting too late. We pray that you'd be with all those we mentioned on the prayer list here shortly, Lord, and we just pray that we'd have a blessed time with you this morning, and we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. <coughs> Page 197. I'm here like a shepherd.
Morris, uh, a member of our church family and our country, armed forces and law enforcement, uh, missionaries, built children's home in Lacey Wheeler and his family. Uh, for our regular prayer requests, we have Corey, Isabel Hyatt, Robbie Mann, Lyle Nelson, Jay Lester, Cody Mercer, Lucille McKendry, Kyle Cotter, Fred Partridge, Pam Christensen, Susan Patterson, Ricky Legree, Ernest Ray Harris, Carson Jordan, Brent McMillan, David Mullinax, Karen Mullinax, Athena Ward, Barbara Shelby, Barb and Kim Frill, Angel, Julie Van Hannon, Joey Lee, Heather Barnes, William Russ, Sophia Sanders, Chris Candy, Rick Swanson, Larry Barber, Ronald Gaspard, Jim Granger, Larry Barthel, Carly M., Lisa Chambers, Earl Wagner, Al Parrish, Ryder Cart, Ron Blacksford, Julia Cart, Linda Hader, Sylvia Cunningham, Jimmy Bohannon, Christian Sredinsky, and I put my mom Alma Surratt on there. She's got a cold and cough and just didn't feel like coming this morning. Um, and for cancer, we have Monica Hyatt, Peggy Davis, Kendra Thorpe. Rowdy Harris, Ms. Newton, Bill Farkas, Bill Barthel, David Statton, John Bosley, Haley Limoge, Sam Cook, Mary Baldwin, Tim Houston, Zach Springfield, Clint Boyles, Chet Taylor, Catherine Fry, Karen Roach, Morris Bryant, Hedge Robinson, Hannah Bombley, Ken Norman, Dan Goldstone, Bryce Ingram, Joe Wiley, Lisa Biandino, David Duff, Jace Black, Judy Morrill and Annette Floyd. And then for salvation, Stephen, Greg, David, Stephanie, Laura Jane, Mary Ann, Ben, Lyle, Evan, Josh, Todd, John, Camilla, Preston, Allie, Karen, Shelley, Daniel, Don, Daisy, Raven, Darcy, Kimberly, and Harvey. Okay, so do we have any we need to add or take off the trails? Uh, Barb and Jim Krill have recovered from COVID. Spoken prayer request. Let me know raise your hand. Okay. Lord, we come to you this morning on this beautiful day you've given us, and we just ask, Lord, your blessings on our church family. Thank you for all those that could be here this morning. Just ask, Lord, you bless our country and its leaders as they make decisions, and as we transition to a new administration, just ask, Lord, that you'd give them wisdom. And ask, Lord, you to bless our armed forces and our law enforcement. Just ask, Lord, that you would bless those, that, especially the armed forces that are away from their families right now, had to spend Christmas without their family. Just ask, Lord, that you would bless them and protect them and bring them back over here on our soil safely. Ask that you would bless Hope Children's Home and Lacey Wheeler, our missionaries. Ask, Lord, that you just guide and protect them. And those on our prayer list, we just ask that you would bless them with their health. We know you know each and every need and every sickness. Just ask, Lord, that you would heal them and comfort them. Just ask that you would restore them back to our number. Those on our prayer list for cancer, we know you know each and every need there also. We ask you to bless, their, bless those, bless their families as they help take care of them, and ask that you would bless the researchers and doctors to, to continue to find cures for that disease. All those on our prayer list for salvation, we know you already know them. We just ask that you would help them, Lord, to see that they have a need for you in their lives. Just ask that maybe we would say or do something that would just let them or make them seek you out. All those unspoken prayer requests, we know you know each and every one of those. Just ask, Lord, that you would answer them in your own time. We just thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for our church. Amen. Our next hymn, page 50. I am resolved. <laughs>
Ik heb dus in ieder geval David doen als de symbol in your name. Just ask that you bless the offering we're about to receive. Just ask the Lord to help us to use it to further your honor and glory in our church. Also ask you to be with the pastor today as he delivers his message. We just ask you to give him the words you have us to hear. Give us all receptive hearts and minds. Just again, thank you for all that could be here this morning, and we just thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Philippians chapter 3. Song and song, just a little while ago. It says, I am resolved. Anybody ever read those words? I mean, like, actually read them, and what this song is. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delights, things that are higher, things that are nobler, things that are my sight. I am resolved to go to the Savior, relieving my sin and strife. He is the true one, He is the just one. He hath the words of life. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful, true in each day. True each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth. He is the living way. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the path of sin. Friends may oppress me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I am resolved. And who will go with me, come for him without delay. Taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit, will walk the heavenly way. That's a pretty song. We sing part of it. We don't sing all of it. But if we really take the words in, uh, uh, what the writer was trying to say, man, that's a pretty song. It almost makes you tear up to think about it. I wonder, I wonder if he was reading, reading uh, some of Paul's letters when he found those words to write those that uh that song sounds some, some a lot like some of the things Paul says on a regular basis we uh we, we went through Christmas now and we we uh we all know that I feel like Christmas is one of those things that the world has put so much uh, uh they devalue it because of what they turned it into Christmas is not what the world sees it to be. And, you know, just about everybody in this world knows what Christmas is. And, man, that's the time of getting presents. And we got a present. And I know we went over that the other day. Our Lord is the present that we got. It was, the most, it was worth the most if you've uh, received that gift that he gave to us. If you've received that, you've got the biggest, best, most precious gift you could have got is to have Christ in your life. Paul was one of those that had thought those things. In his life for a long time, he thought he was doing the right thing. And uh, when he turned his life, he turned it over to the Lord completely. I would ask y'all today, have you considered what our next holiday is? What's our next holiday? Easter. Easter. New Year. New Year. Come on. New Year's just got the corner. And everybody makes New Year resolutions. What was your, have you even thought about it? You ever thought about New Year's resolution? Uh -huh. Not in a long time. No, yeah. Not in a year. <laughs> Not in a year. I mean, I we a lot of a lot of us make New Year's resolutions and we don't hold to them. You know, people make resolutions to lose weight and to get healthier and and to do a lot of those kind of things in their life that's got to do with its physical body. We uh, have me and Amy's want a house built. You know, so I don't know if that would be hers or not that we get this house built for. Christmas next year, and she's wanting that, wanting it to be built before then. If the Lord lets us have it, then maybe we will have it before Christmas. But the uh, the things that's most important in our life are not those things that are physical. The things that are important in our life are the spiritual things, and we we put too much emphasis on the physical, just like they do in Christmas, putting too much on those things that are uh, the gifts that would be to us and uh, the the uh, the money that it would make and 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 how they could profit in those things took away from Christ's uh, birth and what it really represented. We can do the same thing in our in our life in the same way by worrying about the physical things and not worrying about the spiritual. I'd ask y'all, um, and I, I try to every year, is try to make a uh, 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 New Year's resolution that I'm going to do something more in my spiritual life than I've done the year before. We can all do that. There is nobody here that can't do more in their spiritual life this coming year than they have the year in the years past, and uh, maybe maybe um, grow closer to the Lord. We we read about Abraham this morning and his life, how how much it took. He was a hundred years old before he ever got it right. You know, 
There's not very many people that live to be 100 years old, but Abraham lived to be 100 years old, and he finally, in the end, he, he had graduated to that point that he had his spiritual life right. This, uh, to the point that God could, could test him and tempt him and however uh, way was, was to be, uh, uh, however he could be tempted, uh, and, and, and uh, Abraham was not willing to fall for those things, but you have to be strong in your faith not to fall for things that's in this world. There's too much of it. You know, the, the TV, the, the telephones, and everything that this, this, we have the ability to, 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 uh, to get on, there's so many of those things that um, um, you can't help but to be uh, tempted in some way. And I'm not saying uh, uh, we're all tempted in the same way because we're not. We, uh, we, we, we're drug away from the Lord uh, for, for many reasons. We're, we're, some people just, uh, just uh, uh, sports lives and whatever it may be. And some of us pornographic material and things like that. And some of it's alcohol and, and uh, abusive things in that way. There's a lot of things. But we think about those people and think, man, I can't believe they've done that. Or I can't believe they've done this. Or, but then we let little things in our life drag us away from the Lord too. Little things. Little things. I just don't feel like going today. I just don't feel like studying today. I don't feel like... And, and I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody else to do that. I'm not saying that y'all are, and I'm not. Man, there's a lot of things that would, that would keep me away from doing the things I'd ha I should be doing for the Lord. There's uh, the scriptures I want to read. Or I, I think we ought to make it our, our New Year's resolution to think like Paul did when he was writing those things he's written in uh, uh, this book. So. Y'all go to Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, I, I did. And I was going to, I was going to tell y'all wrong again. I? The Philippians. I got Ephesians 2. The Philippians. I'm sorry. I've done that about what? Two months ago? Doesn't say anything? Right. Let me see where we need to start. We know that, that Paul had a, 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 an experience with the Lord on that road to Damascus where. When, he, when that experience was over, Paul didn't never look back. He didn't change. He did, his life was changed completely at that moment. Everything he'd done in his life from there on, we don't read a whole lot about Paul messing up. We read about Peter messing up and some of the other apostles were messing up. But when Paul was called on that road to Damascus, he went from, from persecuting the church to being one of the, one of the most, the greatest speakers that we read about in our, our, uh, uh, our New Testament books. Paul wrote a lot of them. He was a highly intelligent man. I mean, I think they said he could speak like six or seven languages. He was, he was on the uh, Sanhedrin court. He was he was uh, well taught in uh, manners and, and scriptures and whatever else. I'm just saying he was he was a, a well taught human being. It was not that he was uh, uh, like some of the fishermen that Christ called that people think might think was uh, was ignorant in whatever way. I don't believe that. I believe those fishermen were just as smart as anybody else. Peter and uh, those that was on those ships uh, fishing doesn't mean that they were dumb in any way. It just means that, that was what they were doing for a living. How many people do y'all know that's not highly educated that are very intelligent? Not me. <laughs> not me. But there, I know a lot of people that are. So I, we can't say that they were they were dumber than Paul. But Paul, we, we understand he is a uh, he was well taught. Uh, I guess we'll start in verse 13. My, my point was I want to make, make y'all understand that Paul had already reached that uh, place that a lot of us are. He was saved. He, he, had, he had trusted in the Lord. He, was, he was, uh, had turned his life over to Christ. And then he writes these things after he was saved. He says, Brother, I count not myself. This is verse 13. Brother, I count, I count not myself to have uh, apprehended, 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 but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. That's a, man, that's a, that's a New Year's resolution. Don't worry about things that already been on what happened in your life from here up to this point. Don't worry about the things that might be uh, uh, holding you back from, from doing the things that you need to do for the Lord that's in your past. 
don't let the things that, that people say and people do and, and those around about you keep you from being what God would have you be. Don't worry about those things. The New Year's Day, the New Year's is not just, just the day. And we can we can put off uh, and say those things. I say that's what it is. It's just another day. I felt that way about my birthday. My birthday is just another day. Christmas is just another day. Easter is just another day. Man, we can we can do that. But look, we can we can make New Year's a new year. Not not just the same old thing going from this this moment in time to the next. Just dragging it through our lives and not changing none of those things. We can determine that next year is going to be different. It's a new year. Not an old year. It's a new year. Paul on the road to Damascus, it was a new life. It was completely different. It was new. There was nothing about his life from that moment on that was anything like the life he had before. It was changed. We can make our New Year's resolution that. We can make it to be something. We're going to make, we're going to make a difference in whatever that is in our life this year. It's not going to be the same as last year. It's going to be changed. Paul says, Brother, I count not myself to have an apprehended. He, he was saved that he was going to go forward in his life like he hadn't been saved. He was going to, he was going to live his life like he needed to do something that, that, that was going to help him to be saved. We know that we can't, we can't earn salvation. We can't earn it. But we can work for it. We don't need to. We don't, we don't, we can't ever pay for it, but we can work for those things. We can work towards those things to make our life a better life than it was before, to make our life closer to Christ than it was in the past. We can make our life a stronger life in Christ in the future than it was before. I got a cousin who preached you know, when, when he was praying, and he always says, says, says oh, Lord, let me be a better Christian. These things make me a better Christian today than I was yesterday. And I use that on pretty regular when I think about it. He says, let those things make us a better Christian than we were. Let those things in our life make us better and closer to the Lord than take us away from Him. We can, we can make a resolution, hey, I, I promise to be in church every Sunday. That's not going to make you any closer to the Lord. I, and you can, you can, you can, uh, uh, I don't know. You can promise a lot of things. And the Lord, Lord doesn't want us to promise anything that we can't fulfill. The one thing that he does want us to do, no matter, is to get closer to him on a regular basis. As, as Christians, we grow by reading, by hearing, and by doing. Not just going. You can go to church your whole life and still be a be a babe when it comes to being a Christian. Abraham left everything he had and followed the Lord. Paul done the same thing. He left all the riches he had. He was a rich man. We, we don't we don't read in the Bible what he was worth. We don't read that. He was but he was a rich man. He was not able to be on that cathedral uh, court cathedral. Somebody say it? So, Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin court without having uh, been in that hierarchy in their uh, their day. So he didn't he didn't need anything when it 